Okay. This is a video I think everybody should watch, especially even little kids. Um, this is uh, how ignorant uh, humanity is. Um, now, in the past, including the ancient Greeks, uh, Plato talked about the ether, and of course there were a thousand different theories of the ether, uh, many of which are wrong. This is there were throughout history a thousand different theories on the human soul. Um, the uh, ancient uh, Jains thought that the soul was uh, atomistic and that it was actually uh, a type of particle. And of course, you know, the refutation of various illogical and uh, absurd theories upon something is not a negation or refutation of something. Just as, for example, um, the Michelson Morley experiment, which uh, presumed to be an experiment on uh, the. Uh, Either the confirmation or the denial of the existence of the ether was certainly no denial of say, and yet modern science, quote unquote, uh, seems to rely upon that as a, a proof that uh, the ether doesn't exist. Yet, um, very simply, humanity is still, as it's always been throughout history, incredibly ignorant. I mean, insanely ignorant. Every branch of uh, of uh, field theory, which dates all the way back to Pythagoras and surely, surely before them, has always thought that they were right, and later on and on they're always proven to be wrong. Now there is a current branch of uh, science that uh, is based upon uh, particleism. It thinks that uh, all interactions uh, can be quantified, i.e. quantity, i.e. materialistic, i.e. atomistic, that there must be something there. and uh, to uh, make their equations balance out, they use something that has absolutely no basis in reality. Well, I should say, it has as much basis in reality as unicorns and leprechauns, meaning none whatsoever. And they admit that uh, these virtual photons have no basis in reality other than to make their equations balance out. There's absolutely 0.000% proof of the existence of this nonsense, none whatsoever, and they use this to uh, form the basis of their atomistic theory, because you cannot quantify a field, quantity, quantum. Um, the entire basis of the notion of a wave-particle duality is nothing other than a statement of ignorance, like uh, five blind men groping an elephant. You know, one's groping the tail and he's telling you, oh, this is, this is a type of snake. The other one is uh, groping uh, the chest of the elephant, oh, this is like a barrel, it's like a hippopotamus. And, the other one's uh, grasping the big flappy ears, and he says it's like a, uh, a skate or a, uh, a manta ray. And of course, you know, none of them have any of the picture. They have no idea what the hell an elephant is because they're all groping different parts. So the notion of a wave-particle duality has absolutely no basis in, in reality whatsoever. The nature of light is really very simple. Mother Nature doesn't have a calculator. Um, and uh, if she actually existed, she'd be laughing at humanity and how ignorant we are. We think we're so advanced because we have TV sets and iPods and iPads and, uh, you know, we have all these technological advancements, but none of that means anything. It doesn't mean that we have a grasp on cosmic mechanics. Um, the notion of uh, field deviation cannot be quantified by anybody on this earth because you cannot quantify something which has no quantity. Everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles. You cannot quantize them. So, getting to the point, what, what exactly is the premise of uh, the affirmation of the ether? Forgetting about all the thousands of different uh, um, uh, pontifications on the nature of the ether, it has to be said unequivocally that the ether does exist. And uh, every proof around you is uh, is an example of the ether. Now we're brought up believing that when you turn on the light bulb, uh, it emits light. Well, it doesn't emit light, nor does the sun emit light. Um, it's uh, like seeing a person out in the middle of a pond that's flapping his arms is actually reaching out and uh, touching you. Well, if you mean by proxy, by way of uh, the perturbations of him flapping in his arms in the middle of the pond, that he creates waves of compressions and rarefactions in the pond, and those waves lap at your feet on the edge of the pond, you can say, well, that person is uh, emitting uh, pressure, so he's emitting something, you know, just like this light bulb, like there's a little person inside this light bulb, when you uh, pass a uh, AC or DC current through it, depending on what sort of light it is, that it's emitting light, but 
This is a vacuum tube. There's nothing escaping it. Well, light is neither uh, a wave nor is it a particle. It is a coaxial circuit of uh, longitudinal compressions and rarefactions and transverse electrical and magnetic divergences. There's only one field ultimately and uh, that is dielectric and it's longitudinal and since it has no transverse component it cannot be quantified in any way shape or form with a time component. Uh, this is why Tesla and Eric Dollard and others have proven that uh, faster than light uh, transmissions are provable. Tesla proved it, Dollar proved it, there's even some videos on uh, YouTube. Uh, one guy does an experiment with Tesla coils where he sends a transmission at 1.39 something uh, the speed of light because the speed of light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. It's the maximum rate of induction of anything that has transverse uh, electrical and or magnetic or electromagnetic components. So, a light bulb doesn't emit light. It uh, sets up a field perturbation. And you can say by proxy, well, a light bulb is emitting light. Well, how stupid does that sound? How come humanity is so ignorant? Now, well, answering that, of course, would take a thousand hours, if not more. Um, take, for example, this monster magnet. Now, based upon my equation and every known equation of uh, field divergence uh, of a magnet and uh, the Gaussian flux that exists at various levels, uh, we can state without taking into account uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, um, a time component that this field exists basically as a bubble about yay far. Okay? That is the pressure dynamics at which it exists. Actually, since this neodymium boron is a few years old, it's actually starting the, uh, the centrifugal divergence. It's hard to show you this because it's monstrously dangerous you can actually see that it's uh, oh, a one inch gap around either side here of a discoloration where the centrifugal divergence has actually affected the chromium plating on this monstrously dangerous magnet. It also hurts my eyes being this close to it after a few minutes. Um, so why don't you ask, this is just a tiny two millimeter ball magnet. I'm going to place it in the center. You think, well, it'd want to stay in the center of this magnet. I've demonstrated this before. I mean, this is just taped to a piece of rope it's easier to demonstrate this on a huge magnet than a tiny one because on a tiny one it's really pretty hard to see. Well, you think it doesn't make any difference what side it is, okay? It'll still do the exact same thing. Why well, I want the magnet to stay right here because this is magnetic attraction, which of course there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It's dielectric acceleration. Well, no, it won't. It'll always shoot to the edge like there's this invisible force that's actually pushing it to the edge like a pressure wave. And that's exactly right. The same reason this little ball magnet, which is a two millimeter a neodymium magnet, this is a huge monster, a thousand dollar neodymium. It's the largest permanent magnet that money can buy. The same reason this little sucker goes all the way to the centrifugal divergent edge and will not stay at the centripetal convergent center here. You see, even holding it like this, you'll see that it immediately wants to jump to the edge. There's no way. There's no way I can get it on either side, it doesn't make any difference, or either side of the bead magnet. No, no, always the centrifugal. Why do you think that occurs? There's not one single book in this entire world that will give you an explanation of centrifugal and centrifugal uh, divergence and convergence. This I can show you with a ferro cell, but I made like 200 videos already with a ferro cell of why there is a toroidal divergent formation around this magnet and a centripetal convergent. Actually, the ferrule cell will look like a black hole right here at the center of this magnet. The same reason this neodymium iron boron will always go to the edge of this magnet is also the same reason why this, uh, the universe's most uh, diamagnetic material is the bismuth sphere that I cast will only want to stay towards the center of this magnet. It likes staying here. If you actually hover it over this, you'll actually find a dip right here in the center. When you actually uh, drag it over the top of this magnet, it'll feel like a dip is occurring right here, then a trough here, and then a dip here. Because this has the universe's highest, uh, uh, highest level of, uh, actually it's kind of hard to say this way, it has the highest level of lowest magnetic permeability. So the magnetic permeability of this elemental bismuth, which is all bismuth by the way, is depleted neptunium just as basically all the world's lead is depleted uranium. It wants to sit here in the center for the same reason this magnet will always only uh, jump towards the uh, centrifugal uh, divergent edge. 
Now, it is the case that uh, knowing the field dynamics of, uh, of Gaussian flux, that there should be a pressure toroidal bubble around this magnet of about yay far on either side. Okay, so we got basically like this. Now, I've shown in prior video many months ago how I can take this sucker and turn on a cathode ray tube. Now, we know that it's only escaping out about yay far. I can take a cathode ray tube, i.e. a television set, the old type. I can actually influence it at a distance of 23 feet or more, actually. It's just harder to see at that distance. I can actually take this monster dangerous sucker and just go like this with the cathode ray tube. And the cathode ray tube will be affected way the hell on the other side of the house. <laughs> Literally. Now, if we have a sphere of influence about yay far, of magnetic divergence that is... Uh, now, the Gauss meters are really sensitive, too, by the way. What do you think is influencing that cathode ray tube at about 20 times the distance that this magnet should be influencing? I don't like to get my face this close to this magnet. This magnet is dangerous! Oh, my God, it's dangerous. Um, it actually hurts your eyes due to the chromatomes here because it is no different than a person in the water, middle of a pond, uh, when you actually turn this, you're actually creating a, uh, a ether pressure flux uh, within the ether that is actually like sending waves out. You say some in the middle of the lake, start flapping your arms wildly, you know, and of course waves start to emanate. They're pressure waves in the ether. And people tell us that there's no ether. What do you think is reaching out there? You cannot quantize a field. Fields have no quantity. There is nothing there. There's certainly no virtual particles. To say virtual particles is like saying God or unicorns or uh, leprechauns are reaching out at far flung distances. I tell people, well, they denote a field for me. What do you mean denote a field? I said, D just tell me what a field is. Well, a field is a, uh, is a, a flux over a given. Uh, that's the description. That's not an explanation. Give me a definition. A definition requ would require quantization. Quantity. You would actually have to give some sort of objective quantification for what a field is. Can't do it. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like saying, well, this light bulb emits a light, this uh, high-powered flashlight. It's not emitting anything. This is a vacuum-sealed light bulb. I mean, a vacuum-sealed uh, flashlight. This is a vacuum-sealed tube. What do you think it's emitting? It's going through the glass. What do you think it's emitting? This light bulb isn't emitting anything any more so than this magnet is emitting anything. It's field pressures. Field pressures. Everything works off two things. Mother Nature is really simple, and that old bra doesn't have a calculator. Okay? And she doesn't believe in quantum. She only knows two things. Divergent and convergence. Everything in the, the universe is uh, centrifugal divergence or centripetal convergence. Force and motion and inertia and acceleration govern the entire universe. From macro to micro. What do you think... I just asked someone, not given a, uh, a time variable, this is just a sheet of copper, right? Okay, boom. What do you think? Just ask someone, well, this is an eddy current. Well, that's a description, not an explanation. I can get a description from a five-year-old child. Tell me what this is, huh? Oh, well, that is, uh, yeah, that is an eddy current due to the uh, dielectric reflectivity of the copper plate as it's dropping over the very strong Gaussian magnetic. That's a description again, not an explanation. I can get a description from a five-year-old. However, these people that are paid billions of dollars to build particle colliders in Europe and uh, think that uh, they're discovering uh, these uh, mystical unicorn part, I mean, they're not, there's not evidence, there's no evidence for any of that. They're actually seeing uh, electromagnetic and dielectric uh, flux paths that are occurring at the, uh, the breakup of... Uh, of atomic particles. Everything in the universe is fields. You're seeing field track modalities that occur at various electrovolts and microelectrovolts that are appearing on a screen as they're causing atomic collisions. What do you think the universe is? Do you think that, uh, you know, that there are virtual... This is their basis for explaining magnetism because there is no quantity that is being emitted here off the face of this magnet. Nothing. There is no quantity there. Now, you can refute, and so can I, you know, a hundred different uh, ether theories. And there are thousands of ether theories over the years. But the ether remains nonetheless. I mean, it's like a fish swimming in water trying to deny that there's water. As stupid humans think that there's no such thing as the ether. Well, yeah, there is such a thing as the ether. I don't care what you call it. Technically, the ether is no different than inertia. 
And when you actually uh, release that inertia and you cause uh, pressure modalities to exist, you cause compressions and rarefactions, just like turning on a light bulb, you're converting one form of electrical power into another. Uh, as Eric Dollard once said, and I think it's one of his most brilliant statements, is that you look at the AC power lines that are going down the street, and there is as much power there as a, a giant uh, locomotive, and uh, there's no quantity that is actually passing down through those AC lines. You could take uh, mechanical force at one end, and uh, you could turn it into a field pressure modality, that exists down the AC current lines and then re and, and turn that back uh, in again to a mechanical motion. I mean, uh, if someone were to actually to understand that you could take a hydroelectric motor the size of this house, uh, say at the Hoover Dam, and then take that AC current and drop it through power lines where nothing is vi visible at all. I mean, it's, well, that's current. Well, it's not electrons flowing through there like squeezing out toothpaste. It is field pressures. It doesn't matter if it's AC current or DC current. You can take enormous mechanical energy, transfer that into uh, AC or DC current, passing down through a large set of uh, two-inch uh, wires, you know, thousand miles away, and turn that back again into mechanical, uh, mechanical force in motion. I mean, nobody ever thinks of that stuff like that. I mean, how does that work? Well, you know, we got electrical engineers. Well. I tell you what, the electrical engineers, the geniuses that gave you one... Einstein didn't give you any of this crap that is lighting my ugly face right now. Um, Nikola Tesla, Charles Brody Steinmetz, Faraday, Oliver Heaviside. These are the people that gave you 100% of the world's electrical grid and everything your computer and all your crap was running off of. And they all knew that the ether exists. Uh, Charles Brody Steinmetz would talk about uh, a busy day in the lab of churning up the ether. These people all knew that the ether existed just as, you know, anybody with half a brain, and really, you know, the world basically doesn't have anybody with one-tenth of a brain, knows that ultimately that this light bulb isn't emitting a damn thing. It is setting up a field pressure compression and rarefaction. Okay, this is a, a field perturbation. The same thing with a magnet, that I could turn it on its side, and the Gaussian flux only reaches out about yay far, so how is it affecting a cathode ray tube at 30 feet away? That's the ether, baby, like someone flapping their arms in the middle of a pond. You know, this is the arm length of someone in the pond. You know, it's about four feet or so, or whatever the hell it is. You can have ape arms, maybe a little bit longer. You think he's reaching someone at the other shore? He's actually reaching out like 100 feet to the other shore? No, he's actually flapping his waves in the water, and he's sending out waves that are affecting other things. There's nothing emitted by this magnet, any more so than there's anything being emitted by this stupid light bulb. And why don't you ask yourself, you know, what is uh, magnetic permeability? What is dielectric permittivity? Everything in the universe is force in motion and inertia and acceleration. And I'll damn well tell you that nobody on this earth can quantize the field for you. They can give it qualities over a given period of time, but you cannot quantize it because it is absolutely impossible to quantize a field, because there is no quantity that makes up a field. Okay? This is very simple, and it's undeniable by anybody. I don't care if they are a professor or a PhD, all you have to do is just say, quantize a field for me. Can't do it. They'll sit there and drool on themselves, or they'll pretend to know what the hell they're talking about, but they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Nobody can quantize a field for you. And the entire universe is fields, and fields are not particles. Mother Nature doesn't believe in any of this crap. She's really, 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 really simple. Okay? Thanks for